report, Mr. Pritchard. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, we have um, had several questions recently concerning um, transportation funding and the transportation discussion coming that uh, the Regional Commission has um, been spearheading through the MPO. I was asked uh, by Commissioner Evans and by the Chairman to invite uh, Mr. Corey Hull with the uh, Regional Commission MPO to come and at answer any questions and to um, review this uh, transportation um, program. Uh, and as Corey is coming, I'd also like to take time to introduce to y'all Ms. Lisa Cribbs. Lisa is, has recently been selected by the South Georgia uh, Regional Commission Board as their new executive director. So, welcome. Thanks, Lisa. Corey. Thank you very much for having me today. Um, I, I guess I'm going to, since I don't know specifically what questions you have and what information you have, I guess I'm going to try to open it up to questions and I'll answer it from there. So, um, I'll turn it back over to any of you. <laughs> Corey, I think probably one of the biggest questions that probably has come out. Of course, we're, we're talking about the truck, truck traffic study primarily, and we're talking about the public transit study as well. Mm -hmm. um, of course, at our previous commission, um, uh, the commission voted to not fund these two studies. Now, what Ms. Evans and, and myself are asking is that we wanted to give you an opportunity to come forward and explain, um, if you can, what the benefits are to doing the two studies. Okay. Do you have any rationale as to doing the studies and the time and timeliness of the studies, doing them at this time? Um, and, and then I would like to look at it from the standpoint as far as, as an opportunity as well, is that if, if the timing is correct, and it's the opportunity at the best at this point to make the investment in the studies. Mm -hmm. and then outside of that, then we can lead from one question to the next. Ms. Evans, unless you've got something. I think, Corey, the biggest concern to, I think, not only myself, but others have. Since the study was done, they say the study is obsolete and there are some changes. No one brought before us the changes that you're looking at that was not in the other studies. And I think we just need to be knowledgeable of what changes that you're looking at and why these changes is going to need to be taking place. Okay. Did anybody else have any questions that I can answer right now or take those? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take those. Um, first off, we have two proposed um, extra studies that the Metropolitan Planning Organization would be doing this year. The first is a truck traffic study. The second is a public urban public transit study. Um, the truck traffic study first is primarily to address uh, the scope of work right now we have in draft format says we're going to address truck traffic issues in downtown Valdosta. Uh, that is the primary function of what we're looking at right now. We w are asking a consulting firm to evaluate at least three different recommended alternatives to bypassing truck traffic around Valdosta or downtown Valdosta in particular. We're also asking them to recommend operational improvements or other improvements that an outside individual looking at our community might be able to recommend that we just haven't seen or, or thought of at this time. As I said, that's scope of work is still in draft format. We are open to discussing and changing that scope of work however we can to make it uh, better for our communities. We have not sent out any RFPs or anything at this time yet because of the uncertainty of funding. <clears throat> the second um, is our public transit study. We did complete a feasibility study in 2007, 2008 that said an urban transit system would be feasible in the urban area of Valdosta. And so everyone's clear, the urban area of Valdosta includes the city of Valdosta plus the Bemis Road corridor all the way out to Moody Air Force Base, the Highway, 1, Highway 41 North corridor 
all the way to and including Hayhira, the Troopville area in Brooks County as well. There's also some other immediate areas around the city of Valdosta in the southern part of the city where there's some, a little bit of more dense development, but it's primarily the city limits on the south side of Valdosta. So that's when we refer to urban area, that's the urban area we're talking about. Funds for transit are divided into rural and urban. Currently, Lowndes County receives rural 5311 transit funds to operate your transit system that you have that you contract with MIDS to operate. You have received a letter um, here in the last couple of weeks um, stating that fiscal year 2016 will be the last time that you're going to receive a full allocation of those funding of that funding and beginning in fiscal year 17 services within within the urban area will no longer be able to occur on the Lowndes County 5311 system. Your service provider MIDS has said that they're willing to work with the clients and with the county to provide those clients trips maybe through un other funding sources um, or in other means um, that they have. So I do want to make it clear that there are options out there. The urban transit system that we did a s implementation study for five years ago, um, that study had, I think it was five routes. We were going to run 10 vehicles on five routes covering the entire urban area. However, there were some big assumptions we had in that study. First, we had $2 million in stimulus funding that is no longer available to us. We had the assumption that we should operate a transit system with um, heavy duty transit vehicles. Um, heavy duty meaning the type of buses you might see in Tallahassee or Atlanta, larger cities. Light duty vehicles are what uh, VSU currently runs on their transit systems. Some other things that have happened is communities are also changing how they address public transit and the delivery of that service to their communities. Public transit is, is not necessarily what it used to be. We have new technologies that are changing how transportation occurs. The Uber taxi technologies, um, demand response is becoming much more popular. Public-private partnerships are becoming much more private, popular in the delivery of transit. So these are some options that were not considered previously that have really come about in the last five years. And I think that it's more appropriate for us to reevaluate some of those options. One of the biggest questions in our draft scope of work for our public transit study is we know that there's going to have to be a, a subsidy, if you will, from a local entity. Whether that's a transit authority or a local government, that's to be determined but there's likely going to have to be a subsidy from a local entity to continue the oper ongoing operations of an urban transit system. We want to know what, how can we minimize that local subsidy, make it as small as possible for our local governments uh, so that there is less um, amount of money going towards that operations as possible, but to deliver um, a good service for our community. So that's one of the primary questions we do want to ask in that uh, a consultant to do for our public transit study. I think I try to cover all of those high level questions there, but I'll open it up if there's more specific ones. Corey, there's, we're talking about two separate studies, correct? Two separate ones, we're talking yes. about the truck route study and we're talking about the transit study. Yes. Why did the MPO not give us the opportunity to vote on those or to, to look at those individually? Just, just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Typically for the MPO, we actually had a, a discussion beginning in March um, and really even before March we developed our draft budgets um, to look at these public these two studies. Um, so the MPOs had this presented at their meetings in March where it was tabled uh, and then finally voted upon to go ahead with both studies in um, June. And I will say there was a very healthy amount of discussion um, in both of those meetings as well as between staff um, between that, that time. Um, to, in the, always as it has happened in the past, the MPO budget is presented in its entirety 
uh, to both local governments. It's, it's never been broken out in the past. Corey, it might help if you could explain to Mr. Ordenstein how the, the committees are broken up and what the makeup of those committees are mm -hmm. as far as how the MPO can, you know, comes to some yeah. of the decisions. We have uh, three committees. We have a Citizens Advisory Committee, and from time to time you've probably seen some individuals come before you to be appointed to that body um, from the county. I think there's five appointments from Lowndes County on that committee. That is our sounding board for what is the feeling like of the general population in our community. We also have our Technical Advisory Committee. They are our county and city engineers, engineers from the DOT, um, and other individuals who advise our policy committee from that technical perspective. Our policy committee is essentially our board of directors for the Metropolitan Planning Organization. They're the final legal making, decision making body for the Metropolitan Planning Organization. Um, they are made up of our uh, executive officers of our community. Uh, Chairman Slaughter, Joe Pritchard sit on our uh, policy committee from the county, the mayor of Valdosta, the city manager from Valdosta, the executive director of the regional commission, and a, the um, DOT has their um, commissioner, however the, the staff person represents them. And then we have a rotating, two rotating seats, one for the smaller cities in Lowndes County and one for the um, outlying counties, Lanier, Berrien, and Brooks counties as well. So that's the makeup of our policy committee. To, have, to give you some insight on the discussion of these two studies, the, it was back and forth in all of our committees. Um, in fact, in our March meeting, our technical committee could not get a second on our budget, so they did not even vote on the budget at our March meeting. Um, as I said, in March, our policy committee voted to table it after discussion. Um, they wanted more information. In our June meeting, our Citizens Advisory Committee, I believe, voted 10 to 6 to recommend that both studies be completed. So you can see that there was some division within the, that even discussion that was happened there. Um, our technical committee in um, June, I believe there was also a split vote there, and then of course, there was a split vote to even adopt our budget um, by the policy committee in June. So there were, and the, all of those happened with a, a healthy amount of discussion. They just weren't up or down. So. I had a question, Corey. Um, as you know, I, I'm a proponent of public transportation. I've, I've worked in traffic and things like that. I appreciate everything you do and MPL do. Um, I just uh, want it to be known, um, you know, though I you know, was the only one supported, but no one, I don't think no one in the commission uh, could say that they're anti-public transportation. And I think sometimes that's the sentiment that goes out to the community, that the county commissioners are anti-public transportation. That's not the deal. I think it's more of a of issue of communication, for one, and then two, um, uh, understanding what type of timelines we've, we've been given. Because uh, it's my understanding that um, some of the results of the studies won't be back for 10 or 15 years or, or the results uh, or, or implementation or something to that effect. A lot of those timelines have kind of been thrown up in the air and, and you don't really have as many facts to deal with. And I would just, you know, personally like to know, is there any way we could expedite public transportation uh, in Lowndes County um, versus the dates and times and all those stuff we've been given? And I think I forgot to answer that question about timing. Uh, we anticipate these studies both taking approximately 12 months um, to complete. So as soon as we were to get that RFP out and get someone on board to have a product in our hands within about 12 months. Um, so that, that would give you an idea as to when our community could begin making other decisions based on this information that you so, have. So it's the implementation that they're suggesting it'll take years out to do if it was to take place? It's really after these studies, it's really up to our community to decide how fast we can go. Um, you know, some of these, a public transit for system, for instance, you probably need to do it as quickly as possible, 12 to 18 months to be up and running. The answer, 
I'm sorry, to answer your question, Commissioner, yes, that was information we received about a bypass and the possibility of DOT and federal highway funding. Mm -hmm. The projection was 10, 12, perhaps 15 years yeah. from DOT. Yeah, if you're talking a road construction project, definitely. But a public transit, uh, it's really as fast as the community wants to go. What's the, the total cost of both of these studies? The total cost of the truck traffic study we estimate to be approximately $103,000. 80% of that being federally funded, 10% funded by Lowndes County as we proposed, and 10% by the city of Alasta. The public transit study we estimated to be $125,000. 100,000 funded by the federal government, 12,000 funded by the state of Georgia, and 6,200 by each Lowndes and Valdosta. Corey, what is the um, percentage of the budget paid for by the various policy voting members? The Lowndes County and Valdosta currently share 50% of the match of MPO funds. We receive federal funds um, at a rate of 80%. Um, Lowndes and Valdosta pay 50% of that match each. Um, the, uh, for transit funds, the state does kick in 10%, so that does lower the local government's match. The other jurisdictions on the policy committee do not contribute anything at this time. The uh, grass study that was completed, it referenced 2008, 2009, but I think the final date on the study was May 2011. Can Did you that address that? The grass study that he's referring to is our transit study, implementation study that we had completed. Um, we started that study with consultant selection in May or June of 2009, and we did not wrap it up until I think the pro final product was early 2011 when we received that final product from them. So that's the, the reason for there being multiple years. And the $125,000 uh, estimate on the study is not, does not include uh, estimate or does not con consider going back to grass for an update it's a new study it would be we have in order to meet our federal requirements for procurement we have to do a full um, RFP process we can always ask rice to come back we would actually ask any of our um, future consultants who would we, we would be looking to hire this they need to look at that old study it's not it's information that's valuable, but there's a lot of assumptions in there, I said, that have changed uh, in the last five years. There is a, there's a program, um, I think it's 5316, mm -hmm. that is referenced in there that is related to, I think, jobs yes. and um, recipients of, I think, maybe federal assistance, mm -hmm. et cetera, welfare. Would that... Yeah be applicable to the urban area? No. Um, actually, con at that time, we had 5316 funds. Congress got rid of the 5316 program uh, under the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act, MAP 21. Those funds are no longer eligible from Congress. So while our old study referenced those, they were available at that time. And 5316 funds were actually, the funds didn't go away. They actually got rolled into the 5311 program, which is the program you have uh, operating your transit system. So there is uh, not a counterpart to the 5311 that addresses urban area. There is, and that's called the 5307 program. Um, the 5307 program is actually the $100,000 I talked about for this study, we would actually be utilizing 5307 funds for that. Currently, the state of Georgia is holding our federal allocation that we receive every year from Congress. We receive just over a million dollars a year from Congress for urban transit in the Valdosta urban area. 
So right now we've got about $2 million fenced off and reserved for us. We would be using 100,000 of that for the federal portion of this study. Could I, could I ask Stephanie a question? Sure. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, is it uh, fair to assume that any contribution made to this effort by the county would come from funding strictly from the unincorporated area based on service delivery? Uh, yes, sir, I believe that is correct. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Cord, to, to kind of, unless there's any other questions, to kind of wrap just, it up, can you kind of help me with, uh, from, your, from your point of view, uh, the last study that was done, and from your point of, of view, why implementation did not follow at that point? And then you can move into that as you would. And I'd like for you to kind of elaborate on, again, in, from your projected numbers as far as what would be the cost of mass transit or a transit system for Lowndes County. Okay. Why transit did not occur um, five years ago? We actually got to the point where I went before the Valdosta City Council to ask them for an allocation in their budget uh, for capital purchasing up front and then ongoing operations. We actually went to them, I believe it was June of 2009, at the height of the recession where we didn't know where things were going. The city voted to cut their budget at that meeting and we were asking them to add, I think, an additional $2 million. And it came down to a tie-breaking vote with the mayor at the time. And he just said, I can't add a new program where we're asking existing programs to cut. I think it just happened to be a myriad of different situations at that time it, it was just a bad time to be to be starting it um, with the economy the way it was at that time um, so that's kind of the reason why it did not occur at that time um, and, and sir what was your second question what's your projected cost to own transit system um, that is really a hard thing to to guess at the one reason is because the way service delivery of public transit has changed so much in the last five years. I think that our community needs to think more outside the box, not looking at a fixed route bus system. I think we need to be looking at demand, more demand response technologies. Demand response is exactly what Lowndes County is doing now with MIDS. Um, using maybe some of those Uber taxi models um, or some of the other public private partnership models. Going, we, when we did our transportation plan that is currently out for public comment now, though, we had to assign some number to it. So we did look at our um, old study, because that's the only information that I have at this time, for our urban transit system in our 2040 transportation plan, which projects funding for the next 25 years. We said $72 million over the next 25 years and 36 million of that 72 is needs to be from an unidentified local source we did not tie down what that local source was because we just don't know and that's one of the things that a study could do would be help identify what that local source is it's not necessarily saying that we would go forward with implementation um Cora, when you're saying when our community is ready for it you're not saying just to statistical data that is uh, justifying it you're saying when we're ready to pay for it <laughs> well I, I think both our com we actually did a feasibility study that said our community could support a public transit system uh, now supporting a public transit system is different than paying for one um, that shows that there's a need for transportation for individuals in our community Corey, two things I want to share with you. I know when we started with me, before we started with me, is when we got the 5311 going, we tried to do routes, hmm? stops. It didn't work. We did it for about right. six months. Yes, ma'am. Never, never worked. We tried, when we first put in our uh, request for that, we tried to go with putting a, a, a public private partnership. That didn't work either. We sat to the table for months and months and tried to work out something with some of the companies around here. And it was difficult trying to get them to the table. Mm -hmm. I think I think some things have changed in the last ten to fifteen years, and I think some of those public-private partnerships. There's new ways that other communities are doing them that I think we could learn from and and possibly replicate here. Um, and then I also think that 
we we would not be looking at covering the entire county this urban transit system means the urban area we would not in fact under federal fund rules we could not serve dasher and lake park or quietville you have to serve only the urban area and beginning in fiscal year 17 the Lowndes County transit system will not be able to serve inside the urban area. So Lowndes County will not be able to serve Hayhira, the Moody corridor, um, Old 41 North, um, things like that. So that's, a, that's a, a situation of those two funds. There's a rural fund and an urban fund. And there's a, a lot, there is a line drawn on a map that says where they cannot be, the funds cannot be used. Corey. My struggle is that uh, in talking to my family, circle of friends, those in my in my district, I mean, what I keep hearing is, and it was it was basically, uh, I won't quote anybody in yesterday's paper, but let's just say that the taxpayers ultimately, no matter how you cut it, are going to have to spend two hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars on this study. So. I'm not real confident that we have a plan and that we we can prove how we're going to fund this thing. So it's almost like, and I hate to be so simplistic, but in my business, you know, nobody wants me to come out and uh, they don't want to pay me top dollar for a plan when they don't have any money and savings to to do whatever it, whatever it is that they potentially want to do. So so I'll just say that, and we're we're being told. We need to get on board with this, but yet I quote, "It's a black hole that you have to fill with revenue from somewhere." So how do you how do I argue that? To, to well, I think one way is, as I said, our both scopes of work for both of these studies. We've not released them yet um, for a proposal. We can change what those scopes are so that you, as elected officials, are getting the an the questions answered that you need answered. So I think that might make it a little bit better. You, you can say that I need answers to these questions and this is what it's going to do and we need to make sure that those are in there for both studies. Um, in some respects, there are unknowns. Um, we just don't know until we have some of this information what it's going to be. Um, so it's, I, I understand where you're coming from there. That If it is this, we can give you the information, but ultimately there has to be another step to to take that die. Yeah. So, to, Corey, uh, the, so Corey, the bottom line is that we need to look at trying to provide the funds for the study to be done. Well, I don't think that the, we can move forward without that. But I say, as I'm saying, I think there's a, definitely an opportunity where we need to reevaluate these scopes of work to make sure that we're having as the questions are in there so that as elected officials, you can get the answers that you need. To uh, address the comment of Commissioner Marshall in saying that everybody here is supportive of public transit. I don't want the point to be overlooked that the only public transit that has existed for the last 15 years has been the 5311 program that Lowndes County started. And Trini, is that ridership maxed out at this point? It's a yes or a no. <laughs> yes. Your, your lessons are based on the ridership, and so far, in the last 15 years, we've had an increase in ridership and some more lessons. So I'm assuming that it is not maxed out as far as what we Thank you. And, 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 you know, um, that's one thing I'm happy about. The county has <coughs> led the way with public transportation at the end of the day. Um, and, you know, from my standpoint, I also realize that, you know, I represent a lot of the citizens in the city. Uh, actually, majority of the city limits sits in my district. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm, I, I got my ears to the ground uh, for their needs, too. So I appreciate everything you do, uh, Corey. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Appreciate, Corey. appreciate it very much. Commissioners, let me also add, of course, as you're very well aware, very well aware is that, um, of course, this, this request for additional funding was uh, denied by the commission. Uh, if in the future that there is a desire to revisit it and take a look at it, of course, then it'll have to come back and be added to the agenda for reconsideration. Um, so uh, that's where we're at with it right now. I wanted Mr. Hall to come and, and answer your questions. 
Uh, he's done that very, very well, as, as always. And certainly, again, uh, Corey, we appreciate your hard work in this effort as well. Okay. Mr. Pritchard? Anything else? All right. Having no other business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, motion. Motion.